I'm Rob Perks. I'm lead curator for oral history at the British Library and also director of National Life Stories, which is the British Library's oral history fieldwork activity. And oral history of British science is one of a number of projects that we've been running since National Life Stories was set up in 1987. It was always in our long-term plan that we would interview scientists, but it's taken us an awful long time uh, to get around to it. And I think it has something to do with uh, the funding that we've had to get for the project, but also that science is a huge area and it's taken us some time to scope it and to discuss with colleagues around the country how we should best approach it. Building on the pioneering work that had been done by other organisations, particularly the Science Studies Unit at University of Edinburgh, and also work funded over the years by the Wellcome Trust, we decided in 2005 to gather together the history of science, history of medicine community at the British Library in a round table to discuss exactly how we should tackle doing an oral history of British science. Uh, and there was general consensus that a great deal more needed to be done and that the British Library National Life Stories was a very good leader for this work. So this led, partly thanks to financial support through Lady Waldegrave, to a scoping study carried out by Simone Turchetti from the University of Manchester. And his work was pretty critical in guiding our thinking about how we should structure the project into four discrete areas, two of which we subsequently were able to get funding for from the Arcadia Trust with top-up funding from a number of other uh, smaller funders. And the Arcadia Trust, I think, shared our vision for the project, which would be in-depth interviews, 12 hours or more audio interviews with British scientists, and importantly with follow-up interviews on video and these would be videos that would be shot on location with equipment, with objects, in other words, of a visual nature, but really as a supplement to the in-depth life story interviews. Life stories have proved really important in enabling us to really get at what makes scientists tick. And for, certainly for historians of science, it's yielded very rich material which will provide a lot of important context on scientists' backgrounds, how they relate to their colleagues, um, not just the key moments and the key breakthroughs, but the, the everyday, um, the humdrum, if you like, of scientists' lives. We started the project in November 2009, and I don't think we would have got very far had it not been for the advice and support of our advisory committee, chaired by Georgina Ferry, uh, with lots of very useful uh, historians of science, but also scientists themselves were able to guide the project uh, in very important ways and also assist us with further funding for the project. We were also lucky to be able to recruit two outstanding uh, history of science interviewers for the project, um, Tom Lean and Paul Merchant. And from the outset, we had an associate partnership with the Science Museum, initially through Tilly Blythe, um, and also latterly with the University of Leicester and Sally Horrocks as our senior academic advisor has really brought a very important uh, detailed knowledge of many of the areas that we're studying um, and brought a lot of guidance to uh, the project as it's progressed. As we reach the end of the first phase of the project, we've gathered around 100 of the original objective of 200 interviews. We're still seeking funding for the two other strands as originally envisaged by the scoping study which will focus on biomedicine and on cosmologies and uh, physics. All the interviews with few exceptions that we've so far carried out are available in their entirety with transcripts through the British Library's website uh, BL Sounds and in that sense this is very innovative uh, creating for a worldwide community of researchers a very major resource for immediate online access.